live, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us the 28th day of May, 2010, on this Friday edition. Two days ago, we uh, posted the amazing article written by Paul Joseph Watson at PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com. Top construction firm, WTC, destroyed by controlled demolition. Now, remember just a month ago, back on uh, April 23rd, the headline, Bombshell, Silverstein wanted to demolish Building 7 on 911. That is from Fox News. But the Fox News reporter said, I was there that day. I was with Silverstein and the emergency management people. And yes, they did say they were looking at wiring and blowing up seven. But magically, it fell on its own, so we didn't have to blow it up. Well, it takes weeks, if not months, to properly demolish a 47-story building. A few years ago, they tried to blow up the Intel building in Austin. A top firm did. It failed. Intel in the late 90s during the dot-com bus finished the skeleton of the building. Then it collapsed, uh, the dot-com bubble, so that they never finished it. But they couldn't even blow up the skeleton of it on the first try, the superstructure. And then we have all the police and firemen footage. I'm not going to go back over today. We may play some where the cops are saying, get back, get back, get back. We're going to blow it up. We're going to blow up seven. And I remember... Being in the car that day, I'd been on air all day, I ran out of the studio to get a pizza, literally a half mile away, to scarf it. I was scarfing it in the car as I was driving back to go back on air. And they were on ABC News saying they, they're, they're going to blow up Building 7. And then I talked about it, and people said, you're a conspiracy theorist. Well, it turns out there are scores of newscasts now, including BBC, where they did a false script and announced that it had fallen in its own footprint 25 minutes before it did. So, uh, look, there's no doubt, folks, they blew up Building 7. We had uh, Barry Jennings, the deputy head of New York Emergency Management, uh, on uh, two weeks later. He died mysteriously, uh, and uh, he, he was getting threats. And he said, yeah, they blew up Building 7. So this isn't a game we're playing. I mean, I hope you understand that. Now, you can debate who carried out 9-11, who had you know, the means, opportunity, uh, the motive, uh, and who thought they could get away with it. And that's the Western power structure, no one else. That's England, the U.S., Israel. They're all joined at the hip. But for the next hour, and then a little bit into the next hour, then Bob Chapman's joining us. Uh, Alan Hart joins us uh, because he's another window into this. You know, you have this Fox News reporter going with the lie, saying, yeah, okay, we were there. They were talking about blowing it up, but we didn't. So you're a conspiracy theorist forever saying we did. So, so, and then you've got all the firemen you know, saying, yeah, they told us they blew it up. And, and then they get fired or threatened. And the cops saying, yeah, they said they blew it up. I've interviewed those cops, Bartmer and others. I've gone and found the cops who were on the CNN video saying, get back, they're bringing it down, folks. We have the live footage. Get back, they're blowing it up. And then again, the cops weren't involved. They were brought into it. And then once they've accepted it, I, uh, they just engage in crime stop or double think, and then they don't talk about it. But but I'm going to shut up. It's just to, to get into Building 7, to get into 9-11, to get into the NORAD stand down, to, to get into U.S. and British troops mass in and around Afghanistan in the two months before, and uh, Newsweek admitting Bush signed the attack order to go into Afghanistan on September 10th, and Jeb Bush declared martial law two days before in Florida, AP, and hijackers trained at U.S. bases. They thought they were taking part of it in, a, in a drill. On and on. It's all confirmed. But to have another eyewitness who's a prestigious pedigree with the BBC, ITN, top correspondent in the Middle East, uh, you, know, inter, you know, interviewing the Shah, Yasser Arafat. I mean, he's at the highest level of journalist, Alan Hart, uh, blowing the whistle that day one he was witnessing the cover-up in in the media, the self censorship that because people are, it's like Albert Speer, the the German in, in, uh, interior minister, the architect, was asked later, why did you go along with Hitler? Why did you do all this? Because he was known as an intellectual and an aristocrat, and they actually let him off because the British liked him so much at Nuremberg. And he said, well, when the devil's got his arm around you, being nice to you, you don't you know recognize it's the devil. And he, he just once you're in it, you're in it. Well, folks, we got to say we're not part of this. The media, everybody. Again, I'm going to shut up, and I apologize for spending some time here with this precious guest. But I just wanted to preface it. Alan, you don't like talking about yourself, but you've got such a lengthy bio. Uh, you know, it'd be like talking about Muhammad Ali's boxing career. You know, that would take an hour to just hit the highlights. But for those that don't know who Alan Hart is, and the website's alanhart.net, 
Tell us about your career, what you've done, and uh, why you're going public now. Well, Alex, first of all, let me say I'm delighted to become a member of your truth-telling society, if I can put it like that. And I'd like to tell you why in two sentences. When I became a very young reporter with independent television news more than 40 years ago, my editor-in-chief gave me the mission statement in one short sentence. Quote, our job is to help keep democracy alive, unquote. And my take today, um, Alex, is quite simple. The mainstream media has betrayed democracy. I suspect you might go along with that too, yeah? They certainly have. They've been part of the complete overthrow of our society. Okay. Well, Alex, my background is I've been in uh, uh, journalism and I, I've been doing secret politics in the Middle East for the best part of 40 years. Uh, I have two uh, claims to fame, in a sense. I am the only person on earth, I think, who enjoyed intimate access to and on the human level friendship with the two greatest opposites in all of human history, Golda Meir, Mother Israel, and Yasser Arafat, Father Palestine. I think there's nobody else on the planet who can say that. My other claim to fame is that you know the first rule of journalism, Alex. If you offend both parties to a dispute uh, or, or a conflict, you're probably on the right track. Yes. Well, I am red flagged by Zionism and the regimes of an impotent, corrupt, repressive Arab order. Both of those have red flagged me, so I guess I'm on the right track. So basically, what I bring to the table is 40 years uh, of experience of covering the world in general, the Middle East in particular, and I should add that I started to grow up as a person, as a young reporter in Vietnam. There I was watching America spending $6 million a minute destroying two countries, North and South Vietnam, on a war it could not win and should not have fought. It was there that I started to say to myself, what the hell is this world all about? Amazing. And again, you're, you're uh, being um, you know, meek about your amazing career, sir, and we appreciate you uh, joining us. We'll, we'll also talk about some of the books that you've written before you leave us. But let's plunge into it now. Why have you decided to come out and you know, lay out the fact uh, that the media is self-censoring and that you talked to one of the biggest construction firms in the world and that they did their own analysis and concluded it was controlled demolition. Okay, well, let's go head on to that, to Alex. First of all, I am not a, a latecomer to the truth of 9-11. I've been aware of the truth uh, since a, a very few days after the dreadful event happened. But the point is this. When I was completing my latest book, it's an epic journey in three volumes through the lies and truth of history as it relates to the making and sustaining of the conflict in and over Palestine that became Israel. I censored myself on the subject of 9-11 because I didn't want to give supporters of Israel right or wrong the ammunition to dismiss me as a mad conspiracy theorist because of my views on 9-11 in order to divert attention away from all the other truths I reveal in my book. I think you'll understand what I'm saying. Alex. Yes, I understand. Okay, so here I am in America. Uh, I did an interview with, uh, with another talk show host that uh, I, I respect, Kevin Barrett. Yes. He asked about 9-11, so I thought, Hell, the book's out, the book's published. Volume three of the American edition is coming in a, in a very few days. So I decided that the time had come to end my own silence. And the point is this. What I think about 9-11 uh, as an individual is not important. It's what people that I've learned to respect think. Now, I have many friends in, in all walks of life, politics, business, you name it. And it so happens that two of my dearest friends are world-leading consultants, civil engineering consultants, for one of the greatest civil engineering and project management firms in the world. I'm not going to name it, Pete, your listeners can either believe me or not, because the research they did for me, uh, uh, studying all the films and everything else, they did for me privately. Well, you're a renowned journalist. Uh and award-winning, so that I mean that's standard for those that don't know to not reveal your sources. You don't want to throw them overboard. I mean they did this in confidence, but continue. Okay, so so here we are. They are truly uh, world-leading consultants, and they they said to me, 
when they studied uh, the film footage and everything else, Alan, it is irrefutable. The building, uh, the Twin Towers, were brought down by controlled explosions from within. Now, I know there are many other people that say that in America, but as a journalist, I can only go on people that I know and trust, right? Yes. Uh, so they send that to me. So by definition, Alex, if the buildings were brought down by controlled explosions, it is a conspiracy by absolute definition. So then you have to take it wider. Now, my speculation, and of course it is speculation, is that it probably uh, may well have started out as an all-Muslim conspiracy. 